Hi guys, welcome back to the Stroke Recovery Channel. Um, if you're new to the channel, this is a series of videos um, detailing my recovery and um, how we're helping more people recover as best that they can. After my interview with Rob yesterday and him not being able to drive, I'd like to talk about getting my license back and um, how it all happened, how it worked. So when you have a brain injury, um, often the hospital will contact your local road authority and cancel your license on behalf of you. Um, they did that for me too. So it's a matter of getting your license again, um, but how? I started by going to my GP and saying I want to be able to drive again. How do I go, how do I go about doing it? My GP sent me to an optometrist um, to have a report done on how my eyesight is after the stroke. Um, remember, my vision wasn't affected. Um, the only thing that was affected was my ability to concentrate on the left-hand side. So if something's happening on the left-hand side of me, I wouldn't notice it. Um, I just wasn't paying attention to it. It's called left-side neglect. Really common after a um, frontal lobe stroke. I took the eye exam with the optometrist. Um, you basically look into a screen and it will give you a series of light flickers and you have to click a button to say when you saw it. Um, the flickers are mainly in your peripheral vision. So the light flickers on the left hand side I didn't notice. So the first time I did it I failed the exam. The optometrist told me not to worry and she said come back in a few months and try again. Maybe my eyes have um, improved a bit. So three months after the failed exam, I um, took another eye exam. It was the exact same exam and I ended up passing that one. Um, basically because my eyesight had recovered enough for me to be able to pay attention to things on my left hand side. Um, so I took the eye report back to my GP. He gave me the details of an occupational therapist that specialises in driving. Um, so she came out to my house and did a check that I had full movement with my left arm. So I had to be able to hold my arm up and go each side like this. Um, I had to have full movement to be able to drive a car. Once she was happy with that, um, she took me for two or three driving lessons with her. They were quite expensive because she's a specialist. Once she was confident that I was able to drive, she booked in the driving test with a local um, road authority assessor. He came out and he sat in the car with her and me and um, I went for a drive for about 10 minutes. He paid close attention that I was looking at my left and noticing everything. I wasn't getting too close to cars. Um, I could see the, see the traffic lights quite well. There was no colour blind. If I hadn't regained as much movement with my left arm, um, and you're in the same boat, don't worry because there are accessibility options. They can put one of those wheels on the steering wheel for you to turn the car like this. Um, they can make changes to your car to get you back driving. So the assessor was pretty happy with me uh, driving the car by myself and was able to sign me off to drive with no limitations on my license, um, no conditions at all, which was really, really good because um, being able to drive is a big part of your life and it's really important for your confidence to be able to get out of the house and drive you, yourself and your family around. Um, it really hurts not being able to drive. I did have a series of seizures a year after the stroke and um, as soon as I had the seizure and was admitted to hospital, once again the hospital contacted the road authority and told them to temporarily suspend my license. Um, I didn't have to go for an exam again but I did have to wait 12 months without a seizure to be able to drive again. The problem with driving anyway after you've had a seizure is one number one you might hurt somebody or yourself, number two you're not insured. If you haven't disclosed that you've got a medical condition um, you won't be insured if you have a crash. So do not cut corners with getting a license, go to your GP, make sure you do it properly, um, make sure that you're not going to hurt yourself or somebody else and make sure you're insured properly. I do have left side neglect as well. I've had my license back for four years now. I got it 12 months after my stroke, which is quite quick. Um, 
I have had a series of small accidents just bumping things um, on always on the left hand side of the car um, which just proves I still don't pay attention to my left as well as I should. I try not to drive too late at night because I still get quite fatigued. Um, the bright lights at night, the headlights can hurt your eyes, give you a headache and you won't be able to pay attention to the road as well. So make sure you don't drive if you're too fatigued. Um, obviously no drugs or alcohol. I do have an automatic car and I do have a manual shifting car. Um, learning to drive the manual was quite hard after a strike because it's predominantly a left-handed situation. Um, I just sat in the car with it turned off and almost did a dry run. I put it in gear, took it out of gear, pushed the clutch in, just kept practicing changing through the gears. And um, I did that for at least a week or two before I started the car and was able to drive it. It is pretty interesting trying to drive a manual after a stroke, um, but I got there and you'll get there too. As I said, I do know people that have had strokes and um, weren't able to get their license back, which really, really hurts. If you don't pass the eye exam the first or second go, don't worry. They will let you keep going until um, they're satisfied that you're concentrating on the left or right hand side. Um, if you do fail your driving test, don't worry. It just means that you need more lessons and more practice. Um, you will get there. Unless you've had a occipital lobe stroke where your vision is permanently damaged, um, you will be relying on friends, family and public transport. I have met with a lot of stroke survivors and their number one question for me was always, how long does it take to recover and when can I start driving again? So if you have had a stroke and you want to get your license back, um, just make sure you do it properly. Start with your GP, they'll probably know what to do or they will know someone who knows what to do. Um, as I said, you're not insured if you crash, if you haven't disclosed that you've got a medical condition. So that's how you get your license back after a stroke. Thank you everyone for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe. I've got lots more videos to come. And leave a question in the comments if there's anything in particular you want to speak to me about. Or you can ask me a question at strokerecoveryvideo at gmail.com. Thanks, guys.